All right, it's the big one. Portrait Painter of the Year, Season 5, Episodes 10 and 11. Let's get started. All right, as I used to say on a certain program, we're about to see the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Not really. Everybody comes out just fine. So let's look at the three finalists. The first one up, this is a self-portrait that they submitted in order to be on the program. And this was one that uh, I'm so surprised to see her in the finals. I, I just almost can't believe it. Not that there's anything wrong with her painting, but they passed over so many people who were kind of the same kind of painter she is. So I'm a little baffled by that. But at some point, I stopped listening to the, the judges. I, I started watching the program with the, the sound off. So here's what she did in order. This was the semifinals. So that was one episode ago. And there's just... It's almost hard to talk about because it's it's just for me a very forgettable image. I won't I won't remember it beyond this day. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's also nothing that kind of sticks in your head that says, "Oh, I want to see more of that." This is the person I've been excited about for quite a while. Oh, I should also say the first person that we saw is an amateur. This is a professional, and you are self-described on this program. Here's the painting that he did in the semifinals, which I. Uh, door. They all painted the same person in the semifinals, by the way, and had four hours to do it. He just has such an exciting style when it comes to brushwork, especially. It looks like he sculpts using the brush. And let's look at the third and last finalist. This, this is also an amateur, and again, as I said, you're self-described. He does this pixelated kind of thing, which I thought was going to get old and a bit tiresome, which it was for me um, here, but he, he had more time to realize his vision as the program went on, and so I, I think he's really super fantastic. So now let's look at the winning commission, which I'm going to include at the very end, is to paint the pop singer Sir Tom Jones. So that's, that's an important and weighty commission. But for right now in the finals, they are going to be painting Laura Linney, who's known for Ozark. She's also, I mean, she's known for a million different films and, I guess, theater work as well. Uh, she's also known for Love Actually. So she's always delightful and pleasant, although I think she's kind of a murderess in the program I just mentioned, Ozark. First up, though, let's look at the commissions that they're going to have to do. This is Dame Leo Lane. She is a jazz singer. So I'll talk about the commissions in about a second. The second commission is going to be Claire Ruder, and she is a soprano. And the third commission is going to be um, Jazzy B, a founding member and of the group Soul to Soul. So I don't know much about these people, but we will get back to that in just a second. So first in the program, it follows a usual protocol where they have four hours to paint Laura, and this is done live, or you know, we want live on tape. <laughs> and that's when the judging will begin. After four hours, three artists turn their easels around, and the judges have their first look, and Laura has her first look, and she's going to pick one of these paintings to take home. So here's the artist who does that pixelated kind of thing, but it's not as pixelated here and more realized. What I find fascinating about what he does is you have to be a really good designer because you have to be considerate of the negative space. How did he decide to carve out that particular shape or series of shapes? I, I don't know, but I think that's what intrigues me as an artist, that he is beyond being able to do all the painting skills and provide us with a likeness, he's also designing as he goes. And I find that very interesting. And the judges have said they want something different and unique, and this certainly is that. So I thought he was a very strong contender. When you pull back, it reads really, really nicely as well, which is important because it's not going to be, this painting is not going to be in someone's home. It's going to be in a gallery. Now the next one up is a painter with a lot of time on canvas. He has been painting for a very long time. I'm only saying that because of his age. He's older than the other two in this episode. And I, 
I've already revealed my hand in prior episodes that I adore his style because I think he carves with paint. He carves with his brush. Look at all the little individual decisions that are made there. People often ask about facial planes, and you can find the planes of the face, but he has what happens after you paint for a while or have been painting even for 20 minutes. You start to go into like a super seeing. You start seeing shapes within shapes, and that's what he's doing here. Whereas here, this is the third artist, she, she, first of all, she does not have a likeness to Laura Linney. I'm sure whoever she, you know, who she painted, it looks like a lovely p woman. And that's fine, and I'm going to judge it based on is it a good painting, not on does it look like Laura, although I think that's a criterion. But you see how she's not doing that same degree of super seeing. She is finding the planes of the face, and that's, that's hard work enough. But She's not finding planes within the planes. Now, when you pull back, I like the painting a lot better when you pull back. Again, because there were good des design decisions made. That black behind her head really makes the space recede. I think that was a smart choice. Now, Laura picks one to take home, and uh, I'm not surprised at her pick. It was this one. Yeah, this one I would have picked, too. Really fantastic painting. I find him so exciting. Now, what, going back to the commissions, what they did this episode is they showed us the commissions next to the piece that they did today. Now, they had unlimited time, two weeks as a matter of fact, to complete their commissions. So we get to see a difference between what they could do in four hours and what they could do when they had unlimited time. So now let's take a look at the two. You can definitely see a difference between the two. And I'm kind of marvel that he was able to do what he did just in four hours. He has absolutely nailed a likeness to the sitter that he was commissioned to paint. So that's a beautiful, beautiful job. But let's look a little bit closer at it. So closer up, just take a look at all the decisions you would have to make. Just about, well, let's look at the lips, for example. Look at all the decisions, all those different paint strokes and mixing. And more importantly, let's look at the hands. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about super seeing. Just look at those fingers. It means that he studied not just the outline. He's going into the shape of each individual finger. Then he's going into the shape of each individual digit and making them round. And the only way to do that is to see the value differences and mix for it. I mean, mix your color for it. And that's not happening here. And that's just a different kind of style, but I also think that you just don't see those same complexities that uh, the painter with more experience saw. So now, again, this is not about accuracy. Every single one of these painters is a, you know, is wonderful at drawing and at painting. But there's something about that first artist that pulls it all together that I just find uh, that I want to see more of his work. Although I do think this was the best work that this woman had shown throughout the competition. All right, here's the fellow who does that pixelated kind of thing. And I almost want to say, well, shouldn't he win? Because he painted, <laughs> everyone else painted two. <laughs> he painted four, <laughs> but which is amazing. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. So. He is a really, really interesting painter. I, sh I sure hope we see more of him in the future. And again, those design decisions when it comes to the negative fate, uh, space, I find absolutely fascinating. I, he, he, you know, this is where you get into painting. And you're painting, this is where you go beyond what you see. This is, again, like the first painter we saw. You go beyond what you see, and you can almost feel what needs to happen what the canvas is asking you to do. It's when it happens in real life and it's, it, you know, everything's cooking along nicely. It's just the best feeling ever. All right, this is it. This is the final of the final of the finals. So only one of these people can go on, which makes me sad because I think two should. But this is a competition program. It's an entertainment. And so let's see who the winner is. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, the fellow that I've adored for all along. <laughs> I'm not saying he was the best painter of everybody that came along in this program, but he's darn 
darn exciting. So this was the painting he did that won his particular episode. Look at all the decisions he had to make just around that eye that's closest to us. That means each time you have to make a mix and apply a stroke. That's a lot of decisions. Like, likewise here. And these are smart color decisions. You know, he's playing against lost and found edges. He's finding warm and cool colors. None of this happens by chance. This is all practiced over a long period of time. And here, as we saw, is what he did today in the four hours and the commission piece. I, I don't know how they could turn this artist away as not being the winner, but we're about to find out who wins. And sometimes it's surprising. The winning painter is revealed. And it's this one. So I'm super excited about this because he's going to do such a great job on the commission of Sir Tom Jones. So I'm not going to recap all of episode 10. I just don't find it that's so interesting. But let's look at the reveal. If you watch episode 10, it's all about the process of how he just meets Tom Jones and makes his preparatory sketches, etc. But here's the reveal. Here's the painting. Certainly, you know, look at the, first of all, you, you have to size up. Whenever you have to paint and size up, it, you, you think it's easy. It's, it really demands a knowledge of your skill in order to go from a smaller size to a larger size you have to be more accurate in your painting mixes and it's really it 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 can be really tough so let's look at the detail here you know one of the things that i noticed was people always uh, will ask how do you paint wrinkles you don't you don't paint wrinkles what you do is you paint the shapes that the wrinkles make and then you paint the supporting shapes around those darker crevices and then you s paint the lighter parts that join those spots. It's all about joining paint and creating this optical illusion. And when he had the time to do it, it's much, it looks much less fractured. And of course, when you walk away from it, it reads exquisitely. So this was a really good season. I enjoyed season five, and we're gonna go on to season six. This was this is just a pleasure. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.